and this is her statement. I would like to first address my abuser, Nason Nason. As you sat on your untouchable throne, there were thousands of children who were willing to sacrifice their entire lives for you. I was one of those kids. I loved you and revered you as Jesus Christ himself. As a child, my only desire was to serve you, to follow your voice, to please you and make you happy. Anyone who was not raised in La Luz del Mundo Church will never understand the level of brainwashing we went through. You made our parents train us from birth to love you above all things. We prayed for you at least three times a day. And we were taught that everything we had was due to your existence. In my eyes and in the eyes of the entire church, you were the representative of God on earth. Your desires were sacred orders. I was taught you were the most important person on earth and that what I did for you, I was doing for God. You abused this power. You used this life to take advantage of me sexually and you violated me and took my innocence. Not only did you taint my body forever, you also shattered my spirit. You took away my belief in everything. You stole my childhood dreams and my pureness. You took away my right to a proper education and pulled me away from it to serve you. As other kids enjoyed playing sports after school, I was being used as a toy for your pleasure. Now I struggle with my own sense of reality because everything I knew as truth was a lie. I lost my family because my own blood does not recognize me as a human being. They do not believe I am worthy of happiness because I spoke against you. You deserve to stay in jail forever. But even then, it would not be enough penalty. What you did to me and countless of other victims can never be undone. It's wishful thinking that your punishment will put an end to this disgusting 100 year cycle of abuse that you and your family have perpetuated for years, for decades. I hope you know that with every lie you keep telling, you continue to take advantage of the most vulnerable members of your church, including my family. There are so many sincere people that worship you in ignorance, and you take advantage of that love. Nason, you are a disgrace to humanity because you not only seek to hurt your enemies or your rivals or people you hate, you actually pray and harm the people that love you the most. You savagely destroy faithful, spiritual children, the ones with the most faith, the most defenseless, and that makes you a monster. Your Honor, we are not happy with this faith. Like I stated before, this child predator deserves to stay in prison for life. Although there's some peace in knowing Nason is being convicted, his agreement is a mockery to justice. With that said, I hope that you will reconsider 
the maximum sentence for each count he pleaded to. This enhancement will fix the harm and the wounds he has left on our bodies and hearts. But four more years will give him more time to grow perhaps some remorse. Four more years will improve the possibility that this type of abuse stops and that he does not hurt more victims in the future. Your Honor, Nason Joaquin Garcia thinks your courtroom is a joke. One day before he pleaded guilty, he told the church he was innocent, that there was no evidence against him, that he never committed any illegal acts, and that if he were to be convicted, it is because he is like Jesus Christ, a martyr punished unjustly. He stated, quote, they will never prove that which I did not commit, end quote. Two days later, he came in this courtroom and told you he was not innocent and that he did, in fact, sexually abuse three minors, including me. And as soon as he left your courtroom and after admitting guilt, he sent another official message to the church stating the opposite. He sent this message through the bishop's council. I can play it in its entirety if the court allows it, but I will summarize. In summary, he told the church, this court abused his rights, that you and the judicial system were unfair and gave him no choice but to plead. He lied to the church and said that your deci decision on June 1st, 2022, showed a clear intention on this court's part that he not receive a fair trial. He lied to the church and said you ordered that he could not present any witnesses and that you denied all attempts to present the evidence he has of his innocence. He stated this court and your honor treated him unfairly because you were going to allow all, you were going to allow all witnesses, including the Jane Doe's to testify without showing our face, so he would never know who accused him, nor would he be able to confront us. He told the church that he had evidence that we are all doing this for money, and that he was not allowed to present the evidence. He told the church that all of the above showed the process was partial. He said all this, and, that, and then said that for these reasons, he reluctantly had to quote, he had reluctantly had to make a quote decision, end quote, in order to be allowed to see the church again and protect his family. He has failed to tell the church that he pled guilty. He told them that he negotiated some terms and agreements so that he can come out as soon and see them. The message reiterated the phrase, quote, they will never prove that which I did not commit, end quote. And turning now to the Attorney General and prosecutors, Your Honor, I would like to let them know Nason was very pleased with the agreement they made with him. And he even asked the church to pray for them, for you. He wished blessings upon those who graciously helped him reach this deal. I hope those pedophile blessings help everyone who made this unjust plea agreement reflect on their decision. I would like the public and this court to know we were not reasonably notified of this plea. We did not know it would happen when we walked into this courtroom still blindsided from having heard the news minutes before we stood before you. At this point, all we can ask is for your mercy so that it, at a minimum, Nason does not control the narrative one last time. Four more years would ensure that our child molester does not get the final word. It will ensure that he does not continue to abuse us even through this judicial process. He showed no remorse and took no responsibility. He does not feel that he is guilty. He has yet to display any regret for what he has committed against me and other victims. I would ask that a minimum 
As part of his punishment, he turned to us and looked at us and apologized for what he did. I ask the court to consider our request and find this is an extraordinary case where justice has not been served. The years that you can add are, are four less years that he will be out in public able to abuse more children. He knows that as long as there are members who believe that he is God on earth, he can and will continue the abuse. Your Honor, everyone has catered to this pedophile's desires his entire life. The church worships him. The Mexican government venerates him and covered his criminal actions for years. Our only hope was the fair U.S. judicial system, and now that has failed us as well. There was not enough weight given to the welfare of all the children, of all the church children in California, nor the mountains of evidence available on record, or our desires to go to trial. They did not take us into consideration despite our bravery to stand against the sadistic child molester. Negotiations took place for the rapist without even giving us a heads up. Our fate was in his hands once again. Please, Your Honor, be the first authority in your life that will stand against this predator. Give him the four extra years his sentence allows. Give him the gift of four more years to reflect on his actions. Give us four more years of peace. <coughs> Que la luz del mundo children four more years of safety. Thank you. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to hear our plea. Respectfully, Jane Doe, number one. Thank you.